Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Eileen, and this is Medicine Walk. And this is being videotaped in my home. And so if you hear meowing or, or, or barking or anything like that, that would be my dogs, and that would be Luna here. Say hi, Luna. <laughs> My cat likes to get in front of things, and I'm having to kind of hold on to her so that uh, she doesn't climb on to <laughs> right up in front of the camera. Anyway, uh, welcome, and I hope that everyone had a great week and had a chance to look at my first attempt at pre-recording a video. So this is this is sort of an exciting, different thing that I'm doing, and I want to be able to do that because of the fact that this will allow me to pre-record episodes and I don't have to worry so much about whether or not I can make it for the live stream. So, anyway, on to today's topic. And we're going to talk about the last conversation. And one of the things that is a part of, and what I'm talking about when I say the last conversation, is that last conversation when we're ending a relationship and what happens is that often, especially if it's not under the best of terms, that it can be something that we want to do to, you know, get our, um, get the last word in, to be able to let that person know really what you feel and how you feel it and what's going on, and it can be very tough. All right, all right, all right. Stay out from the front of the camera. It can be really tough when uh, you still feel there's that need to express yourself. There's that need to say, well, I, I want to make my feelings clear, and I want an apology, or I want an explanation, and all of those things. And, and we create the scenarios in our mind, and we see it, and we, we focus on it and we kind of daydream about it. The problem is, is that often the reality is far short of what, what we would like it to be. Maybe that other person is not as contrite as we would hope. Maybe they don't even feel they owe you an apology. Maybe they feel you owe them an apology. And even if you were able to try to ask why someone behaved in a particular way, it doesn't guarantee you're going to get an answer that will be enough. And ultimately, what that last conversation becomes is a bungee cord that sort of yanks you right out of closure and back into the pattern of not being able to let go. So when you think about what it is that it means to end a relationship it it can be a very powerful thing it can be something that causes a lot of stress it can be something that causes a lot of pain now this isn't in every case yeah uh, not every every situation where two people decide that it's no longer a good thing for them to be the, together and this is not just in romantic relationships this is also in close friendships, and when it comes down to that point of being able to uh, let go gently and nicely and, and with some level of compassion, it can be a challenge because often feelings get hurt, and when feelings get hurt, we want something that will sort of make us feel safe again, make us feel like we can be, we can be balanced again. And when we consider what it is that we need, sometimes it is some sort of closure conversation. And if the other person is willing to do that, if, if it's a situation where, you know, there can be civility and it's just a matter of expression, and now remember, this is on both sides, so if, if you want to hear, you know, if they want to, you want them to hear your closure statement, then you have to be willing to hear theirs. 
and that can often be a very difficult thing and maybe even rehash stuff that is better left unsaid. So as we look at what it is that we want, what it is that we um, need, <laughs> yes, the cat is running around, what it is that we need, uh, consider that a very personal thing. It, it's a very personal question. What do you need in order to be able to just say, okay, we're done? And that can vary. That can be, um, maybe it is, like I said, some sort of closure conversation. Maybe it's just that there's no contact. I mean, like, nothing. You know, it's like, all right, you, d you go, blessings, bye. And sometimes it is best to have that full separation at least for a while until things kind of calm down and you can each work through what it is that you're working through. And the idea that um, it could be something that can be a very healthy thing to have that space. And it could also be an important part of closure to, um, to have some sort of, of clearing type of either ceremony or experience that you can have that will allow you to um, to be able to have some sort of, of, of ritualistic aspect to it. Uh, it may be, I've known people who they've split up and, you know, there's a sweat lodge. I've known people who gather their friends together and just sit and talk about the fact that they're not going to be together anymore and that way the friends can be there and kind of support the process and as long as they're not the friends who want to start dividing things up because that's also an aspect of this sort of thing it is that sense of you know dividing up teams and 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 camps and factions being formed and that's not very healthy it it does not support ultimately what is the most productive thing, which would be to figure out a way to create peace about this change, this, this change in a relationship, this change in each one of you. So when you consider, uh, if you're in that situation, and if you are, and, and you're going through a hard time ab about it, yeah, you know, I really am sorry that you're suffering. And I'm sorry that it is hard for you. I'm sorry that you're experiencing discomfort over this. Because it is discomfort. It is difficulty. It is kind of resettling and, and figuring out a lot of things, including it can affect your self-esteem. It can affect your, your confidence, depending on how it goes. Or it could be one of the most empowering things that you've ever experienced. Try not to put it in a box. Try not to figure out what it should be. Because ultimately, it is what it's going to be. And we cannot control how other people react, but we can control, or at least we can affect how we respond to things. What is the choice that we make in response to someone else's actions of choosing not to be a part of our lives anymore? Or when we, if we reach a point where we choose not to be a part of someone else's life anymore. And it's easier if you're in a situation where you don't have to deal with each other, if it's uh, if it's the type of thing where you know you run with the same group of friends or you ha you work together there can be some tricky pieces to this bottom line is that you figure out what works figure out what each of you needs figure out if you can work sort of together to be able to say okay uh, if we're not going to be together anymore, then let's do this as nicely as we can. And it can be done. And like I said, this is whether you're romantically involved 
or whether you're just friends and that friendship has run its course. And also keep in mind that it's not necessarily permanent. It may just be that there needs to be some sort of a break or that there needs to be some sort of a, a time out. Whatever it is, relationships can be very empowering. They can be supportive. They can also be damaging. And they can also kind of turn your world upside down. Communication is the most key part of this. Being able to talk to one another, to talk with one another, as opposed to talking at one another. And being able to embrace the idea that it doesn't have to be about good guys and bad guys. And when I posted this as a tweet, and every morning I post a tweet, and uh, if you'd like to see them, you can either follow me on Twitter, or you can uh, join the Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen Facebook group. So either way, uh, when e each morning I put out the tweet, and this particular tweet got a lot of responses and people were commenting about it that and one of the biggest things that people deal with in relationships is how to end it what is the agreement and oddly enough that's a conversation if, if you're going into a relationship that may be one of the conversations that you want to have is okay if this doesn't work out or or you know how do you feel about it? how do you break up how do you separate emotionally from someone? And if you can figure out a way to do that with compassion, and like I said, it doesn't hurt to actually have a conversation about it. Because that way, you each know where the other person is kind of coming from. And maybe you've been together for a really, really long time, and something changes because things change. The only constant in the universe is change. That everything at some point is going to be different. So how do we manage that different with something as, as vulnerable and significant as our own hearts, as our emotional attachment to somebody else? And there can be a lot of different types of, of relationships and a lot of different reasons that relationships end and as I said it doesn't have to be about who's the good guy and who's the bad guy and and who's at fault and who's gonna get trashed on Facebook and who is going to you know just suffer and who is going to be the victim none of that really helps because there were things about that relationship that did serve. There were things you learned. There were things you gained from with it. And if you can be able to keep a perspective on the idea that, okay, it wasn't all good, it wasn't all bad, it was what it was. And then figure a way within yourself what is it that you take ownership of? Because we all have to take ownership for our parts. If we want the other person to take ownership, we need to take ownership too. And it, it can be very complicated, or it could just simply be that, you know what, I think we've kind of grown apart. So keep focused on what it is that you want. Who do you want to be? Do not allow anyone else's actions to turn you into someone you don't want to be. If you're a person who normally comes from a place of compassion, don't let what someone else does take you out of that. We have to stay in integrity with who we are. And that includes when things are not so easy. When it's not so easy to take the high road. When it's not so easy not to resent. And it can be real easy to resent. But is that you? 
Is that who you are? Is that who you want to be? I don't think so. I think that you are a compassionate person who cares deeply and maybe who got hurt and is in conflict because there's that that impulse to pay back. There's that impulse to, yeah, I'm going to tell them off. I'm going to, you know, whatever. And then there's your heart. There's that impulse inside of you that just wants to be a good person, that doesn't want to see anybody hurt. And sometimes that can cause us to turn our anger and frustration in on ourselves. And that's not healthy either. Yeah, it's not healthy to go into the total blame game, nor is it healthy to decide, well, it's all my fault, I'm a horrible person, I'll never find love, that's why I can't have relationships, you know, we can't have anything nice. So, look within yourself. Look within to who you really are. And if you're feeling hurt and in pain, acknowledge, right now, I am feeling hurt and in pain and maybe abandoned and maybe angry and maybe scared identifying what you're feeling goes a very long way towards finding that balance point again and if you really really need that last conversation I would suggest you consider having one with yourself just sit down and say, what will this bring me? Do I really believe that I will somehow hear something that will make this better? Will expressing myself honestly give me what I want? And if so, how do I want to express myself? And when you really start to break it down and really start to analyze it and really start to say, okay, this is this is it this is a thing then you can look at your part in it without judgment you can look at their part in it without judgment you can decide maybe that that last conversation doesn't need to happen maybe everything has already been said maybe all you need is just to say goodbye and then look towards the infinite possibility that lies ahead of you. Otherwise, it's like dragging an anchor. And unfortunately, that anchor gets dragged right into the next relationship. Because then that person suddenly is, is being measured against what previously happened. If we don't resolve and, and let go of what was past, then the next person just starts getting scored. And it's not fair to be held accountable for the actions of others. It's, you know, I, I often hear people say, it's like, well, I, I have abandonment issues. And my response is, well, I didn't abandon you. If somebody has commitment issues, well, then that's something for them to work out. But no one should be held accountable for what somebody else did. And maybe, as I said, that last conversation would be best served with yourself to say, all right, can I truly move forward, let go of that, just trust that, you know what, sometimes people just do what people do, that people react from a place of either their wounding or their insecurity or their fear or their anger or some other issue that was around long before you were a part of things. If you get into a relationship with somebody because you can think you can fix them, no, that's not going to happen. We get fixed from the inside out. And it's wonderful to want to help somebody move forward. And we can't piggyback them. It's up to them to walk that path, and you can walk it with them. But if it turns out someone isn't who we thought that they would be, then maybe we, look, we need to look at our expectations. Or maybe they need to look at their expectations of us 
if they believed that we were supposed to save them somehow. So allow yourself to explore those things within because that's where you get the answers and that's the point that makes the last conversation unnecessary because there's acceptance that people do the best they know to do with the tools they have at the moment and if somebody's choice led to the end of a relationship then that's for them to work out it's for them to figure out don't require anyone else to do anything for you to be able to move on you can do that all by yourself you can let go and move forward and look at life as an opening of something that is new and that is there for you to explore that's there for you to experience don't look at it as, well, I'm going to march with all of my baggage right into the next thing. Leave the baggage behind. You don't need it. It doesn't serve you. And if you end a relationship or if a relationship is ended and you're having a hard time, please get help. Talk to somebody. Uh, maybe you talk to a clergy person. Maybe you talk to a therapist. Maybe you just find somebody who's had some experiences that you respect, someone you look up to, someone who's sort of like a mentor to you, and see what they have to say, and listen, and maybe it's not what you want to hear, but listen to it anyway. You can decide whether or not you it resonates with you, but it's good to hear, especially from someone you respect someone who you know cares about you, someone who doesn't play the somebody has to be the bad guy or the, well, you know, I was abandoned, so I'm going to transfer all of that into you and tell you you can't trust anybody. That's not true. There's wonderful people out there that if you do, if a relationship is something that you want, you can find one. It's amazing how many different people are out there in the world. And that just right person that you're looking for may be there. And it's best if you are going to head into that, that you don't worry about dragging anything from the past. Bring the things that you learned. Bring the wisdom. Bring the, the insight that you gained. Because there's amazing insight that can be gained from a situation like that. We learn a lot about ourselves. We learn a lot about how important it is to to be in our own power and to have people who respect that and to be respected. So if you learned a lot from that relationship, bring what you learned, but don't bring the story with it. That can stay in the past because it doesn't really serve you. It doesn't serve the next relationship. All it does is create that bungee cord right back out of closure and into the past. It's okay to look back, just don't stare. It's okay to go there, just don't pitch a tent and start camping there. Relationships can be tricky, and when you find one that is amazing and, and fulfills you, and helps you to just feel that warm, fuzzy sense of, of safety, then that's great. And if for some reason that contract, that spiritual contract, becomes complete, you can move forward and it doesn't have to be ugly or mean or angry because most often it's all of those things are just coming from being afraid and being hurt and being sad and it's okay to be sad and one day you're not going to be sad and you're going to move forward and you're going to remember what was good about it and what was not and you'll use the wisdom that you gained to move forward so sometimes it's 
just easier just to let that last conversation go. Except that it probably is never going to happen. But you can grow from the experience. You can learn from the experience. You can have a new conversation with someone at the beginning of a relationship rather than worry about going back and having the last conversation with the last one. And like I said, if you're going through a tough situation and ending a relationship, I'm sorry and I wish you the best. Never sell yourself short. Don't fall into, you know, bad guys and good guys. It's okay because something amazing may be waiting for you. And I hope that for you. So let it go and move forward into possibilities. And I wish you the best. So thank you for joining me. And uh, if you would like to support uh, this channel as it grows, you can uh, click the subscribe button. I believe it's over here. And you can uh, like, you can share, uh, you can comment, because I always do read the comments. And I always love interacting with folks and, and as, as this community builds. You can also follow me on Twitter, and you can join the Facebook group, Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen. You can sponsor this channel. Uh, through Patreon, and there's a link in the description. So once again, thank you for joining me.